goofy historians is the funnest place to learn about history? Or is it the funniest? Welcome, everybody. This is a humorous history podcast, and we are the goofy historians. Today, we are going to discuss Alfred the Great, the George Washington of the United Kingdom, kind of the father of England, but a but like a thousand years before George Washington. Alfred was born in 848 in England somewhere um, near Oxford or something. And he died in 899. So we're gonna talk about Alfred and how great he in fact was or wasn't. But first, before we forget, I wanna give a shout out to the Rest of History podcast. Um, and and their crew dominic sandbrook and tom holland um not the yeah, tom can, I, can I say something on that sure but not the tom yeah. holland. so I, I there's two tom holland <laughs> okay yeah yeah he's the history well he's 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 uh yeah the, the historian tom holland's so what's interesting is they have a two-hour podcast on this very subject and they're English. They're both very English, right? And uh, if you ask any American who Alfred the Great is, and they won't have a clue, right? It's like they go, no, what? We don't know. But if you ask an Englishman who Alfred the Great is, you know, they've been marinated in this history since the time they come out of the womb. Man, they're just force-fed Alfred the Great. And when you get that much propaganda, that early in your life, and it continues through, you know, your educational years, it becomes part of your reality, right? And there's, so they come to the conclusion, of course, that Alfred is great because they're English. Right? I mean, right. they've been brainwashed, even though they're so, they're so intelligent, right? This is like the optimum of intelligent people, but they're brainwashed and they think Alfred's the great. So we're gonna do the same thing. Obviously we haven't been marinated in Alfred the great. <laughs> But we've been marinated in Washington, right? And so, but like you said, that's only a couple hundred years ago, as opposed to a thousand years ago. So we, I don't know about David, but I don't come to the conclusion that Alfred the Great is great. I think he's, he's, he's good, but he's, he's oh. not great. Not in the terms oh, that's of Charlemagne a, or Alexander or that's, Cyrus. That's, in, that's interesting because uh... I'm going to take the other side on this. I, I lived in England for a while, uh, but but to continue on, we also want to give a shout out. Um, this will be more in the second part, but to Dan Carlin's new five hour epic show on the Viking that covers 300 years of Vikings from Charlemagne to the Normans. It's called The Twilight of Azir and definitely check that out. The third thing I want to mention a shout out to is Netflix, Netflix movie, The Last Kingdom talks about Alfred the Great, the story of it. And although at some point he's almost the, if Alfred, the story of Alfred is almost a backstory compared to Ulrich, the Viking guy. But anyway, it has a lot of historical accuracies. Um, but anyway, please subscribe yeah. to our channel. Please subscribe to the rest of history. You can find that um, everywhere. Yeah. Um, and, and the other, the other source, of course, is the great courses. They have like courses and courses on England and the Vikings, great courses, <laughs> the great courses from the great courses, but they're very good too. So there's lots of sources on Alfred the Great um, and there's a lot of textbooks on Alfred the Great. So the textbooks are sometimes hard to read because they're written by English, but, and you just right, like so let's, let's roll take your eyes through most of it. Let's take a minute and talk about that for a second. Okay, so the books that are readily available on Alfred are like schoolboy hero books. Um, there's books. this one you have, um, and you have one that's different, um, but they're written, like we were talking about, it's like a propaganda kind of thing, which, which is fine. Um, the other thing, the book uh, to, to check out, of course, is the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles. And this is a great history um really not well written um but check that out as well so i guess what we're saying is that if any of the goofy historians had been british 
we definitely would have picked Alfred the Great as our favorite person in history. Um, without a doubt, he's a folk hero and a national treasure for the British. Um, they say he was actually a descendant yeah, of, yeah. of Queen Elizabeth, which is weird. I can't imagine <laughs> have a direct, uh, you know, a thousand years before. That is wild. Anyway, okay, yeah, so yeah, Alfred yeah. the Great. I just want to say, so something about, but yeah, it, it is. I mean, he, he did influence England. I mean, that, that that's why they got ants in their pants and thought they were deserving of taking over the world, right? It's like, they weren't, right? It's like, you don't need a world empire. You know, you're not that great. But so foundation myths can be can be very dangerous, right? And there's one that I just, just to show you about the whole hypocrisy of foundation myths is the one right after George Washington died, there was this guy called Parson Wims, you know? And he's the one who created the story, which is a bold-faced lie about George Washington cutting down the cherry tree, right? And, you know, he says, Father, I will not. And obviously the story is to inspire love and faith and make you good American citizens who don't lie, right? But the story is a lie and they called him on it, right? So, I mean, just the whole hypocrisy of someone using a lie to teach people not to lie, right? But the problem with that is eventually, well, the English never did find out. And, and a lot of people in the United States don't know. They okay. still believe that Cherry, that Washington chopped down the cherry tree. Okay. All right. Yeah. But that, that, that that's going off. We need to get back to the Anglo Saxons and that. We'll do another one on George Washington. Yeah. Okay. So foundation myths and, you know, origin stories, um, they have their purpose. Um, so Alfred was the youngest of four brothers. And he had a sister too. Like I said, he was born in 848. Um, I guess you can talk more about this, but during this time, the multiple kingdoms of the Anglo-Saxons had been defeated by the Danes as Vikings, as opposed Norway and Denmark Vikings, not Swedish Vikings. They went the other way. And we can talk about that more in a later, uh, later on, but yeah, we so, do one of the Vikings. Yeah. Right. So Alfred became king during a time when the um you know the Viking invasions were just were just happening. And and I don't know if you want to jump to the part where he um it, it's kind of the, the famous the, the famous battle. Um what is it, Chippendales or something, where the Vikings attack yeah. Alfred? <laughs> yeah. <on> Christmas? <laughs> that, that's how I remember it. It's, it's, it's not Chippendales. It's not Chippendales? We should. We, we, the battle is no, something. That, that, the Vikings that, that, like on Christmas Day, like during the 12 days. It, 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 and they wipe out. It, 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 it's it's Chippen, Chippenhounds um, or something. Chippendales is the male dancers in Las Vegas. Well, you so don't know what they that, were. That's why I thought it was. You don't know what they were doing on their Christmas festivities. Anyway, that's, that's Vikings, right. That's why it's so funny. But Vikings, can, can I? We just stop. We just let, let's just get a little. I'll go through a little of the backstory so it makes sense. Okay. Okay. Go now, ahead. I'll be quick. I won't. I won't be like an hour worth of history. But 400, the Romans left his left England because <laughs> the Roman Empire was falling apart. The Celtics took back England, became heathen again. Right, they were partying, but straight away the Anglo Saxons and the Jutes showed up, and they were the Vikings of that time. Right, about 500. They came, they destroyed the Celts, they pushed them to the east or to the west, and they the, the Anglo Saxons took over England. Right, and as a matter of fact, they were the original gangsters, they were the original Vikings, right? But they be, they, they went native. They learned to cook crumpets, drink tea, and converted to Christianity, which means literature. And they had a connection to Europe, right, and to Rome, and to all of this history, right? They, they became a foundation, uh, a civilized country. Um, and eventually, they divided themselves into, like you said, the four kingdoms, Northumbria, East Anglia, Mercia, and Wessex. And it starts out, and, and even though they were Christians, right? 
they were fighting each other as viciously as the Vikings would eventually to take over them, right? So it was only because of the Vikings that these four kingdoms, the Anglo-Saxons, actually united into Anglo-Saxon as opposed to Anglos and Saxons, right? We think they're, we think of them as the same thing now, but they were really two different groups of people. Um, so the first one was Northumbria. They had the power. And they and that was when, so about 800, the the new Vikings come, right? From North, went from, from Norway. And they started, uh, and actually, initially they just started raiding and trading, right? There was trading going on too. Actually, there's one story of this, uh, these Norwegians who kidnapped an Irish boy and then sold them to a group of nuns who, who, who used them, who used them in not, not very Christian ways. So th there was trading going on before that. But one of the, at one time, the Vikings show up on the co co coast of Northern England in Northumbria, and they realize they forgot to bring trade goods, right? So they show up at Linda's farm. And since they didn't have anything to trade, they just went up to this, 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 this monastery and took all the wealth and killed the nuns and everybody. And that was the beginning of the raids. And those raids started, that's all they were, they were raids. But eventually when the Vikings realized how easy it was that these that, that these Anglo-Saxons had gone soft, right? That everybody wanted in on the loot. And eventually it stopped being just raids and they came over in force. They came over with hundreds of ships with their wives and kids and like grandma like strapped in her little rocking chair to, to the back of the boat. They were coming to stay. And that's right. they where began they, they should, began to winter. Right. At that point they, they began, began to winter. They began to winter. They were no longer raiding. They were no longer raiding. They were coming to stay, right? right? Which means, like, what the Anglo's did to the Celts, the Vikings are going to do the Anglo's. That was the whole plan, right? And first, so the first guy they run into is Edward of East Anglia, right? And he says he pays them off, gives them horses, and tells them to go north, right? go north to Northumbria, get out of my country because Northumbria has more gold than I do. So they do, they, he goes up and takes over Northumbria and then they turn around and come back to East Anglia, right? Which wasn't part of the deal, right? And so he says, well, you can't pay him off. I guess I'm going to have to fight. So, but of course he doesn't know how to fight any better than the Northumbrians do, right? So they capture him, they tie him to a tree they shoot him full of bow and arrows. They shoot him full of arrows, and he's like a porcupine, and he won't die, and he keeps talking about Jesus, babbling on about Jesus. So they eventually cut off his head, and the head is still talking about Jesus. So they like throw it in a bush, and a wolf comes along, grabs it, brings it back, and he's still talking about Jesus. So they stick him back together, and it's a miracle. His head goes back on, and they bury him under a tennis court. Right, right. And that's then, a great story. And, and, and that's a great story and a great Halloween costume. So let me take it from the ninth century. Yeah. Okay. So the um at this point, um Wessex is the last kingdom. The Danes have gotten Northumbria, they've gotten Mercia, they've gotten East Anglia, they've they've kind of probably by surprise. And they're in control of everything except Wessex. So now King Alfred is the king. I wanted to say something about King Alfred for a second. So King Alfred, when he was four years old, his father sent him to Rome and the Pope um, gave him like a, a Roman coronation, this, that, and the other. A couple years later, he went back with his dad and he um, saw the um, descendants in the court of Charlemagne, Charlemagne's grandkids, as it were. Um, so Alfred kind of had this, he was probably on his way to become a pope, except all of his brothers died, because the Dark Ages were, in fact, dark. So anyway, jumping ahead, Alfred's king, he's the last kingdom, and he thinks that he's paid which, 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 which is a, which Which is... Which is the name of the uh, of the Netflix series? Right, he's the Last Kingdom Netflix series, 
so he thinks, like you said, that he paid them off, gave them horses, and they went north to Northumbria. Um, and that's when it takes us back to the, the battle of the, the Chippendales. I know that's not the right word. Anyway. Almost, so, almost, almost. Can I just jump in a little bit? Because it, okay, it is funny. I'm going to get to the tale of the funny. marshes. Yeah. I'm going to tell the tale of the marshes here in a second if you let me get to it. But go ahead. Yeah, but you step out there. You're, you're, jump, you're jumping ahead. Let me, let me, let's get we're to We're going to jump back right. all the way to the because... Vikings before this. So it's okay if we're jumping around. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay. So the, they've taken Northumbria. They've taken East Anglia. And the king of Mercia is still there, right? But he sees what's happening. And so he takes off. He takes off with the loot and moves to the Spanish Riviera or somewhere and lives the rest of his life in peace, or the Italian Riviera. So he became a he became a monk, right? So Mercia is gone, right? And and so the just the to jump Mercia in there, just to jump in there, he wasn't the only king that did that during that time. There was a lot of kings that were just like- screaming. Oh yeah, it was the smartest thing to do. Right? Yeah, the yeah, smart yeah. thing to do. But his wife stayed on. His wife stayed on and, and sort of was was the king of Mercia for a while, right? So that's when, so, so okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh, originally the one who went up and conquered all the thing was Ivar the Boneless, right? Which is a great name. And apparently it was because he couldn't get an erection, right? And so, which really pissed him off. He just had a bad attitude. And he went up to the king of Northumbria and threw him in a snake pit of vipers. And that's how he killed the king. And then he gave somebody a blood eagle. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on. But he goes back and then he goes up and takes oaths. But the time he's, the time they take Mercia, he's gone from the scene. And this guy, God, Guthrum, took over. Right? And he's the one who's going to be Albert's, and he's the one who shows up in the last kingdom of Netflix. He's going to be the one who's going to show up at Chippendale <laughs> and do a dance routine with, with Albert. Right. So, so, so I just wanted to fill in that to fill in that link a little bit. Right. Let's talk about the... We, so you can we're, going to talk, we're going to talk about Vikings a lot, um, both before and after this, because there's a lot of great characters. But right, yeah, the... The boneless guy was first, and then Guthrum um, is a famous character, and, and he shows up in Netflix's Last Kingdom too. He he's this giant dude. Um, but anyway, yeah, so he's, he's like Hagrid from from uh, yeah. So it's huge. So Alfred thinks that he okay. A couple things here. Alfred didn't run off like the other kings. That says one no, thing. No, he didn't. He stayed. He stayed. He stayed. And um, we're going to talk about the second part. You're going to of this. You're going to uh, eat your words because Alfred does end up being great. Anyway, right now he's got to learn how to be king, and he's failing because Guthrum comes on Christmas, and Alfred doesn't even have time to to fight back. He's got to just get out of there. And he takes a few of his, you know, he people skedaddles. and skedaddles. And then Guthrum comes in there and he's like, whoa, oh shit, Alfred escaped. So Alfred is on the run. And this is where the English folklore fairy tale comes in. Alfred's on the run and he goes to the marshes. And this is a, a scene that is replayed over and over again. So the marshes... Um, it's actually an area called Somerset in England now. It's like suburbia. But back then it was marshes. And he, he's sitting there and he's all he's all really disgruntled. And he's, he's trying to figure out how he's going to get his kingdom back. And he's in this little hut of this lady, this little peasant lady that that lives in the, the marshes. Swamp lady. Right. And he... And he's supposed to be watching the bread. She's cooking bread. And this is the great American uh, British Bake Off because he's uh, he's supposed to be watching the bread. Um, and the question is, was he like really depressed and just all sad? Or was he contemplating how to gather the troops and defeat the Vikings? Anyway, we don't know. But what we do know is that he burnt the bread. And that is, like you said, how Alfred yeah. got called the Great. 
for the first time. It was like, oh, great, Alfred. You burnt the bread. So it turns you, out you that burnt, Alfred, you burnt the crumpets, right? You burnt the crumpets. So he wasn't yeah, a he good. Was he wasn't a good baker of bread, but at he, that he time he did, yeah. he did figure out. He he wordsmithed. I guess some type of a document that he could send out, and he did, and it worked. And he gathered all his yeah, so, subjects from far and wide. Yeah. Okay, you can go now because I I told my crumpet story. Yeah, I want to go back to the crumpet story because <laughs> I think so. This this is mythology equivalent to the cherry tree, right? It it actually doesn't even show up in literature until like a hundred years after Alfred's dead when they started writing the mythology. But it's 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 the greatest it is the greatest story because I could just see. Of course, he doesn't tell the swamp lady that he's the king right he's just some derelict lost soldier right and so she's like helping him out get him get him set again get him a job right and he comes back and the, the, the trumpets are burnt well oh, they're a little bit crispy you know <laughs> not, they're not that crispy and she goes like you had one job alfred one job you know you want to conquer the kingdom and you can't even watch the friggin' bread right let's start with something simple <laughs> I think yeah. that showed the initial failure of Alfred. He can't even bake bread and he wants to conquer the kingdom and he never does conquer the kingdom. But all right, he I does, want to jump in there. A couple times. Um, the story is great, not for that reason. The story is great because he was so humble that he didn't chastise the lady in the hut. And and also his and his grandsons did conquer England. So, okay, so... Yeah, his grandson did, but why doesn't his grandson call Gray? He's not the well, one who did it. Okay. Yeah? And then well, 100 we can argue years about after that, that, they were conquered by the Normans. We can argue about so that we'll, we'll more. We'll talk about later. that later. Okay, but that's not even why. He, I, I don't know. I think... I think that's not even why I he's think great. it was he his was job great. to watch the bread. He should have watched the bread. All right. He should have watched the bread, but there were other, there were so many other things that he did that were great. And the thing is, there's a lot of English kings that were good at killing people. Alfred was, in fact, good at killing people. But like I said, he was like sort of preordained to do this. He felt that if he screwed up, God was going to be pissed. He was devout, very devout. And the things that he did in terms of he knew that the you know, the Vikings were going to come back. And the things he did to fortify Wessex and to um, to actually begin to unite. There, there was a, a name that they called, like the, it's like a king of kings in England and different kings over the years, centuries had done it. And by the end of Alfred's reign, he hadn't united everybody, but they did look to him because he was the, the last king standing. So... Um, so anyway, he gets all his people together and they defeat the Vikings. He, they defeat Guthrum. And that's a huge thing. Um, does Guthrum yeah, well, convert it to Catholicism? I mean, does, exactly. does I mean, Guthrum okay, so let, 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 let's let's set that 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 tale straight too, right? Because I mean, initially, yeah, Alfred had, was an ally with Wessex, right? They were supposed to be working together. And then Alfred was caught off guard in Guthrum game. But when they, when, when they finally met, you know, Guthrum on the battlefield and, and they, they did their shield wall stuff, right? Which is a lot of great Netflix battles with the shield wall, which is just ridiculous, right? That's, 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 that's a stupid way to have a battle. But it, it, was, it, was, it was in the middle of winter, and that's one thing. The Vikings aren't afraid to fight in the winter, right? And where if you were an Anglo-Saxon and you were fighting another Anglo-Saxon, you waited till the spring, and you waited till everybody got to the field, and then you had your battle, and then you counted the dead, and whoever had the most dead is lost, and whoever was, you know, won. They, they, they followed the rules. Anglo-Saxons fought in the winter. 
So this happened at Christmas, right? When, when, when they were fighting the Chippendales. And now it's not too much later, right? That they're fighting Guthrum again in the middle of winter and they're cold and they're wet and they're miserable, right? And so they fight and finally Guthrum and Alfred said, okay, let, let, let's just call it. They didn't, it wasn't like a great victory. They called a truce, right? right. And this is where he, he tells you, you become a Catholic, right? And I'll become your godfather, right? So you have right. like this 10 foot tall, 10 foot tall, like huge, massive Viking. And then you have this little scrawny Alfred with his stomach ailments, right? his worms in his stomach and stuff. And then <laughs> he becomes the godfather, right? And then he says, okay, let's split Mercia. You take half of Mercia, and I'll take the other half of Mercia, right? And so he's like, he like sold out Mercia totally to the Vikings, right? You know, he, and I mean, maybe that was all he could do at that time, but it's still, he sold out. He was a sellout at that point. And I think maybe that was the best thing they could, because remember, East Anglia is gone, Northumbria is gone, and now Wessex is gone, right? And so all he has left is Mercia, right? And then he paid him off with Danegild. He paid him off again, right? Guthrum to leave. So it's not like he was a great battlefield hero. First, he sold out, sold out Mercia. He's like, take Mercia, right? And here's some money. And just leave me alone for, for five years. And that was the last king standing, right? But, but, but it was more of a negotiation than victory. But I think what makes, what makes yeah. Alfred great is what happens, what happens after that. What right. he did with that, that five years of reprieve. Right, right, exactly. And well, one thing that um, uh, the the Rest is History podcast pointed out is that the Vikings were were ferocious and they were you know fearsome in battle, but in some ways, um, you know they they were like a a group of thieves that were on the run. I mean, that massive horde, you know, that they didn't have, um, sometimes they didn't fare so well in a pitched battle, you know? Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, Alfred, yeah, I mean, think that, but that at least the Alfred they, showed they, up, they, they, you know? They, at least Alfred showed up to the battle. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 a thick, ailing man, and he's like, yeah, they showed up there. Yeah, yeah. So when they had to go from raiding they could do raiding, right? They they could do raiding. They were good at raiding, getting in, going fast, like you know, you know, getting in and getting out, which is what which is what Alfred did when he was running around in the swamps, right? He 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 became he became um, the swamp king. He he became a guerrilla fighter, right? And it turns right. out he was really good, like 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 Mao or Washington, you know, or uh, Ho Chi Minh, right? Really good at that, right? And what he's similar to Washington, he's not only was he a good guerrilla fighter, he turns out he was a good political leader, right? right. Which is unlike Mao or Ho Chi Minh, right? I mean, that really takes a talent where you could switch from being a guerrilla fighter to being a leader of a, of a unified country, you know, and not, not ruining it, making that transition. So he, he was, he was, he was great at that. I don't think he was a Charlemagne. But he, or you know, Cyrus the Great, but he was it, within England. He was certainly great, you know, within the, within the within the boundaries of the Isle. He was great. Yeah, for sure. So, for anyways, sure. Um, he, you know, the other so, thing we need to talk about, and it'll set up for part two, is that his love of learning, his literacy. There's a story of his childhood. Yeah, you know, there's a story of his childhood. So, where, can I tell the story or no? There's a story of his childhood where his mom has this beautiful illustrated book of poems. And um, the four brothers, you know, she says, whoever can read this, whoever can memorize it and tell me what's in it, I'll give you this book. And Alfred was determined to get that book. So he um, he talked to his like his tutor that was learning, teaching him you know, the Bible, and they focused on that book for a few days, and he memorized everything that was in it. And he presented it to his mom, and his mom gave him the book. And one of the tales is that he kept that book with him until the day he died. The reason why I wanted to tell that story is that he was, in fact, later, 
when he had the opportunity, a very keen educator, and we can talk about the jewel of Alfred and the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles and how he was obsessed with writing and scrolls. And that is the big difference because the big difference between the Vikings you know, and the Anglo-Saxons at that time wasn't so much their, how they looked or how they fought. It was the Vikings were heathens. Um, they weren't, you know, Christians. So that was the whole thing where you can write and um, go down in history. So if, if he had failed, um, that would have been lost. There would have been, until the Norman invasion, any more writing. So that is, uh, you know, an asset to. Yeah. So, yeah. So Christianity was, was like the state of the art in terms of, in, in terms of any type of, uh, um, any type of writing or skill, right? Like Christianity was like the Fox news of that time. And that's all there was. Right. So, I mean, but the other thing you got to remember is that Alfred and the, the pictures, it picks this up in, um, in, in the last Kino and Netflix really well too, is that Alfred all his life was infested with intestinal parasites, right? He had, he had bowel problems, which means he spent a lot of time in the latrine, right? And they didn't have sport pages, right? So what was he going to do with all that free time sitting on the pot, right? So he was probably reading, right, that book of poetry for hours a day while he, while he was sitting in the latrine. And so if he didn't have that bowel problem, maybe he would have been out with his brothers, you know, hunting, you know, or, or going on raids, you know, and, and, and becoming more and more militant. And also right. remember, he, he did go on the crew the, the the pilgrimage to rome right so he actually saw what a what a real civilization looks like he spent time with the grandsons of charlemagne right so he was much more cosmopolitan than than his brothers were so he was he so there is that so when he finally got his little kingdom he knew what to do with it he saw what charlemagne was trying to do he saw what the romans were trying to do he knew about roads right he he he, he knew about you know, laws, right, about getting, you know, and, and he knew how to uh, use the Twitter of that age, right, writing, right? I mean, he wrote his own biography, right? So, you know, so he he was creating his own mythology, right? And so, I mean, that that was that was smart. I mean, he, you know, he, 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 he was a myth, myth builder of his own creation, right? And, and Anglo-Saxon Chronicles were created by him. So all he had was good press, literally, right? And, you know, historians now have to sort of, you know, and, and, he, had a, he, and he had an enemy, right? Which right. is great. What you need is an enemy that you can dehumanize, right? Just like the evangelicals want to own the libs, right? The the Vikings were the libs, right? He had someone they could they could hate as a group of people, right? It's like yeah, these course. are the bad people. We have to own them. And so there became a differentiation between us and them, and he could write and the Vikings couldn't. So the Vikings right. got the bad end of the shift. And that is a good place to take a break um be sure and, and um watch for part two and we'll be back real soon thank you goofy historians is the funnest place to learn about history or is it the funniest does history repeat itself eh, not really but sometimes it kind of rhymes thank you